Okay, this is a lesson for Mustang Sally. Uh, this is the Buddy Guy version with Jeff Beck on. I'm first of all going to play the rhythm guitar part that you can play throughout the whole song. I'm then going to play it uh, slower to help you practice playing along with it. Um, I'll put the slower version at the end of the song so you can skip to it. Um, this guitar part is like a mixture of what Buddy Guy's playing and one of the other guitarists on the track. So if you listen to the song, you'll only hear little bits of this guitar part. Um, I'm also then going to show you how to play some different licks. We're going to use these licks as fills, uh, so that when you're actually playing this song, you can have a, you can choose if you actually play the chords along to the song, or if you want to actually improvise a little bit of lead guitar. All right, so to begin with, I'm just going to play through the rhythm guitar part at full speed. One, two, three, four. Alright, so in the Buddy Guy and Jeff Beck version of this song, uh, Jeff Beck's playing a lot of lead guitar fills in between um, the vocalist singing. Now, a fill on the electric guitar, it tends to be just a couple of notes to sort of connect uh, two bits of singing together. And in blues music, uh, the lead guitar, it should add a little bit to the sound of what the singer's doing. So in this song, what I want you to do is, there's four licks written on the tab. I want you to use each one of these licks, which I'm going to play in a second, to improvise and fill in the gaps between when the vocalist sings. Now we're going to use the minor pentatonic scale to do this. We're going to use pattern number one. Um, that's written on your sheet for C and F minor pentatonic. Also, you should know some of the notes in your pentatonic scale. This uh, third finger on the D string is actually a root note for chord one. So that's a C note there. Each of these fills finishes on one of the root notes in the scale. That's really important because when you're playing a fill, uh, it's, it's good in blues if you can end on one of the root notes in the scale for that particular chord. So these are C or C7 licks. So we all end on a C note. I'm just going to give you like a little example solo um, as to how you can use those different fills to improvise um, in between each of the little vocal parts. So for example, for the first part of the verse, um, I'm going to sing and then improvise using some of the licks. Um, after he says, so he goes, one, two, Mustang Sally. That's when you could play your lick. One of the licks, it could be any of them. So let's try a different one. one two. Mustang Sally. Guess you gotta slow the Mustang down. Okay, and then we change uh, chord, it goes to an F. Mustang Sally, baby. Guess you gotta slow the Mustang down. So all you've got to do is wait until you've got that gap and then play one of these fills. One, two. Do it again. Now, in fill number one, 
we're doing a rake. A rake, it's a type of muted strum. Now, if you've ever muted the strings before and hit them, like this, then you've already done a rake before. The reason why it's called a rake and not just mutes is you need to drag your pick across the strings. So, in the uh, lick number one, we're playing the eighth fret, G string. Rather than just pick it, like that, we're gonna rake into it. So what I'm doing is I'm using my third finger to lay across the A and D string so that if you pick them, they're muted like that. Now the trick is, is you've got to also have your first finger pressing down the eighth fret, which is the fret which is written on the tab. And if you pick those three strings, A, D, G, your third finger should only be muting the A and D string. If this happens, then it's muting the G string as well, which is the one we should be able to hear. So your first challenge is to get two mutes and then the eighth fret ringing together. Now to do the rick, if you look at my picking hand, you've got to get your pick. Imagine that you're gonna do a down strum, so make sure that your pick is pointing up towards the ceiling like that, not like this. Drag your pick smoothly from A, D, onto G. Now practice that enough and you've got to get the timing so it goes like this. Like that. Another thing to point out is I'm doing a hammer on in the last two notes of this lick. So when we play eight and then 10, don't pick the 10th fret, hammer on. So you compare that to just one, two, it sounds fine doing it without a rake, but starting to use this rake technique, um, it'll give you a much more sort of expressive sound when you're improvising. Now you don't have to do it all the time, uh, it starts to get a little bit annoying and it stands out if you do it on every single note but it can really make certain notes stand out. And that lick, you know, it's not complicated. Okay, but it doesn't have to be. If you put these different techniques in, there's also a slide at the end, it can make it really stand out. So here's how the lick sounds in full. Okay, one, two. Again, one. Two. Fill number two, we're doing another technique, we're doing a string bend. Now this type of string bend, it's really common in blues music and it's a good way to make your minor pentatonic scale fit with a major chord, which is what we're doing in every one of these licks here. So we play the eighth fret again, same note we used for the rig last time. And you're gonna use your index finger Make sure that it's hooked underneath the neck. Your finger should be hooked underneath like that. It should be touching the underside of the neck. That allows you to pull the string downwards. Now, when you pull the string, you need to twist your wrist. If you look at um, another video on my channel uh, for Cocaine by Eric Clapton, I go into a little bit more detail about this technique. So you're pulling that string downwards. Can you hear it change there? It should make the string sound a little bit sharper. Sharp means it should sound a bit higher. Like that. Now, one of the key things to do with this technique is if you're doing this type of bend, it, it says a quarter on the tab. Don't let it come down again. That won't sound good. It'll just sound like a, a note that's gone out of tune. So to stop it, get your pick and just put it back on the string. Like that. Now in the lick, we're going to do that bend twice. So you've really got to practice getting the timing of pick, bend, stop, and repeat. Now at the end, I'm playing the 10th fret, and then getting your first finger and barring it across the 8th fret on the B and E. Hold both those two sets of fingers on and pick down, up. Let the notes overlap. You just get this nice sort of ringing uh, sound like that. Sounds a little bit like a chord. 
that's really common in blues. You can do it with all sorts of um, you know, different pairs of different pairs of notes. Here's it in full. Yeah. Okay, fill number three. We're doing some double stops. Double stop is a pair of notes. If you've ever played, then you've played double stops already. Um, what we're doing here is we're using the first finger on the eighth fret, just like we have them in all the way through. D and G string, strum those together. Slide up to your 10th fret. Slide back down. So you're only picking at the beginning. To do this uh, slide, if, you've, if this happens and it just disappears, it's because you're either lifting your first finger off a little bit, don't do that, keep it pressed down, or more likely your thumb is uh, getting a bit lazy and it's lifting off the back like that. Your thumb has to stay pressed down and don't try and slide it with your hand. You can do that, but it's not necessary if you're moving by uh, two or three frets. Watch my thumb at the back. Doesn't move, stays where it is. You'll notice there we're doing another bend on the sixth fret A string. It's exactly the same as that we did before. Make sure you're using your first finger. Your finger should be hooked underneath the neck again like that. Twist your wrist to bend the string. Don't bend your finger. Now the different part here is you're playing a different string immediately after it. So you've got to stop that bend, stop that string bend with a finger as well. To do that, get your third finger, which plays the last note, and lean it across the strings. So when you play your last string, it's actually muting the A string like that. Okay, this might happen to begin with. What's happened there is you've, you've barred it, you've pressed it down across both strings. You've just got to get the angle of your finger right so that it's only pressing down your bottom string. Again, you know, blues, it's not complicated music, but to play these bends and these breaks and stuff, you've got to be quite accurate with what you're doing. So, you know, spend a long time doing that. You could spend, you know, all week practicing that. And you'd, you'd probably find it more useful than sitting and practicing, you know, picking and with scales. That's more useful if you're playing blues music at least. Here's lick number four. Goes three, four. Now, uh, the final fill, fill number four, is using a pull-off, so the opposite to a hammer-off. You're on your 11th fret on your E string. Uh, you should have your first finger on the 8th fret. Put both fingers on to begin with. Pick the uh, 11th fret. Pull your third finger downwards. That's a pull-off. You end up flicking the string a little bit, like that. The reason why you put your first finger on at the beginning is if you don't, you've got to time putting your first finger on perfectly and it's not necessary. You know, put both fingers on. Another little tip, put your first finger on so that it's actually covering up. Uh, it's actually touching. You see the B string there? We're not playing that yet. Whoops, have your first finger so it's touching it a little bit. Now that is so that if you accidentally uh, flick your B string when you pull off, it won't ring like that, and you will get lots of horrible noise. So you use that first finger to mute the string. It's the same thing as if you've ever played a power chord on your A string, and you use your first finger to mute the bottom string, so you don't get this. So we're pulling off, then the third finger is going onto the B string, 11th fret, same fret. Then we're returning back to our first finger on the 8th fret E. Now pick down, down, up. So you go up at the end because your pick it should land underneath the E string and then you can just pick upwards and you don't have to think about being accurate with your pick as much. 
if that first finger is still muting the B string, you won't get this. If you're getting that, make sure your first finger always stays with the B string just on top of it, so it's dead, it's muted. Make sure that that first finger doesn't stay fretted constantly, or else this will happen. Here both notes are overlapping, you might not necessarily want that. So lift that first finger up a little bit so that both notes don't ring. Okay, now um, in this song there are points when a C chord is being played. Um, and you're going to be playing the fills. But it also changes up to an F chord. Now when that happens, you can carry on playing your C minor pentatonic, but the easiest way to use all of those licks you've hopefully been practicing is just to move them up so that you're now playing F minor pentatonic. F minor pentatonic is on the 13th fret. So one of the great things about the pentatonic scale is if the chord changes from C to F, you can move your pentatonic scale from C to F as well. It's the same as that. So all you need to do then is Take each one of these fills and just move them up so that you're in your pentatonic scale. So fill number one is going to sound like this now. Uh, one, two, three. If you're getting stuck where that is, okay, just play your F pentatonic scale and stop on the string that is used for, for fill number one. So the first note is on your G string. So stop when you get to that string. That's where your first note's gonna be. Go back down to where you played it originally, if you know this lick. Okay, so the next note is like the second note on your D string. So that's gonna be that one, put them together. And it's just a case of moving everything up. Now you can read this on the tab, but it's also quite good to, to practice testing if you can play a lick down in C. And then just move it up. That's going to get you really, really good at seeing this pentatonic pattern one in different places on the neck. Um, don't just play the fills, okay, once you've actually learnt them all. Have a go at coming up with some of your own. Now remember that you need to try and finish on a root note. Finish on a C note if you're playing over a C chord. Finish on an F note if you're playing over the, over the F chord. You should have a sheet um, somewhere in your folder which is telling you the names of where these notes are um, inside the scales. So look at, the, look at that sheet and find where your C and your F root notes are and that'll help you target the different chord changes. Now here's the intro and verse played slower at 84 beats per minute. You can use this to practice playing the uh, full section of the song um, with me if you're not able to slow the track down in any way. Okay, here's the metronome. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 